Welcome to Thriving Together, our newest episode introducing the Senior Center, we're calling it the Senior Center, to anybody over 60. We want you to come, we want to tell you about some of the things that are going on in Beverly that m might be of interest to you because there's so many good things going on. Today, my guest is Allison Bobbin, Director of Beverly Public Library. I'm happy to have you here today. I have been a long time fan of the Beverly Public Library. Yes, you have. So, <clears throat> I'm particularly interested today in things and events at the Beverly Public Library that would be of interest in particular to older people. Not sure. that it's exclusive, not that yeah. you turn down younger people. Uh, the first thing I think of is the bookmobile because okay. my mother loved the bookmobile. Yeah. Not just because it came to her house, but because the librarian got to know her and picked out books that she thought she'd like. And so uh, tell yeah. us about it. I'm us so glad it. you mentioned that, Carol. So the bookmobile is a traveling library. It is a truck with bookshelves and books right on the bookmobile, and it has probably a couple thousand, at least over a thousand books on there. And so folks can visit it. It goes to, it makes over 80 stops on a three week rotation. It visits everything from preschools to assisted living facilities. It also visits the senior center, as you probably know. And folks can come right on and browse the shelves. But as you say, one of the biggest strengths of the bookmobile is also the bookmobile librarian who gets to know the patrons, gets to know the types of books that they like, and can make excellent suggestions and actually put bags of books together for those readers. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Well, so you said it stops at preschools as it well? It does. It stops That's at fabulous. preschools. I didn't it know makes that. some neighborhood stops. Yeah. It uh, visits a lot of the schools. And then it also visits places you'll know, like Colonial Gardens, the Herrick House. Um, it goes all over the place. So we have this schedule here that shows exactly where it goes um, on its rotation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, the other thing <clears throat> that I, as a senior, frequently go to is the Monday morning series. I know yeah. that's ended for now for the summer, but tell us about that. Yeah, so the Monday morning series is a lecture series that's designed for seniors, although it's open to everyone. And it happens on Monday mornings, hence the name, 9.30 to 10.30. We serve some light refreshments, coffee, donuts, things like that, and have a different speaker come each week and talk about a different topic. So everything from the history of Beverly Farms with Nancy Coffey to a presentation on Queen Elizabeth II. We've had a historical fiction panel with a variety of local authors. We had Steve Crow come and talk about the people you meet on the Appalachian Trail. Um, so it's a great way to get out of the house, learn mm -hmm. something new, make some friends, mm -hmm. and just enjoy a really interesting Monday morning. Yeah, thank you. And I want to say that when I go there, when I attend, I often see people that I also see at events at the Senior Center. Yeah. So there's yeah. definitely a crossover. I'm sure there. there's a lot of crossover. And we welcome everyone. We welcome suggestions. And as you met, I think you mentioned, we run a spring series and a fall series. Um, right. So it does break during the summer, but it runs most of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think the next thing I, I want to talk about sure. is the reference desk. Yeah. I am a huge fan of the reference desk. So I don't know if, I, if, if our audience knows what I'm talking about. It's not the main desk where you check books out. It's this little desk off to the side. Mm -hmm. And I occasionally walk in, walk over to that mm -hmm. desk and say, I read this review of a book and a, this word is in the title, but yeah. I don't <laughs> remember the book. And somehow, magically, it, they always come up with that book. Yeah, so but librarians it, love questions like that. Yes. We love to solve a puzzle. Um, and this happens a lot. People will come in and say, 
I, I saw this book on TV. The cover is blue, and it has the word acorn in it. And we will figure out what book that is. Yeah. And most of the time, we can. We have a lot of tools at our disposal that we can search. And there's also a whole network of librarians across the state that are happy to help workshop and figure that oh. out together. Sometimes we rely on that. But the reference desk is staffed by librarians, and we're happy to help research any type of question you might have. And we get all types of questions, everything from, can you help me with my resume? I'm looking for a new job, to uh, what is that tree out front in front of the library? I want to know what, you know, exactly what type of tree that is, and we can look that up for you. Um, all kinds of fun questions. I just got a new puppy. Can you help me find some books on how to train him? Uh, we can help you find information. Yeah. The, the last time I was there, a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> I wanted an online book, and yeah. the app for it had changed since I had last sure, used it. Sure. And I was running into a problem, so I went in and the reference librarian, Chris, yeah. helped me with that. Okay, great. But here's the yeah, thing that yeah. surprised me. <clears throat> At one point, I had to go onto my iPad and read some stuff, and I said, oh, I don't have my reading glasses with me. Oh. And uh, that's when I learned yeah. that at the reference desk, there are a group of Sun of, we uh, do. of reading glasses. We have a bit and of, I could of reading glasses. The reading yes, glasses. at different strengths. So we hope to help all eyes. It was amazing. So yeah, if you forget your reading amazing. glasses, we can definitely help you out. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned ebooks because that is a huge part of what we offer now in today's world. And for anyone who might think that ebooks aren't for them or too difficult to learn, we can help you learn them. And I think the apps have changed a lot and become a lot easier to use. Mm, I think so. The two main apps that we offer are Libby and Hoopla. And you can get ebooks and digital audiobooks on both of those apps. So whether you want to read it like a print book, but read it on your iPad, your Kindle, your phone, whatever device you might want to use, or if you want to listen to it. Um, you know, I'm really fortunate my grandmother is still alive. She is 98 years old. And she's, her eyesight is really declining, but she's still sharp as a tack and loves to read. And so audiobooks are making a huge difference in her life right now, mm -hmm. the ability to still listen to books and still mm -hmm. have a way to experience reading. So here's a question that's just come up. What you mentioned, Libby and Hoopla. Yeah. Yep. Libby I'd used many times, but okay. the book that I wanted was on Hoopla. Yeah. So, yep. so they work very similarly. They, there, there are slight differences between the apps, and I always recommend that people check both if they're looking, for, you know, if there's a book they really want to read and they can't find it on mm -hmm. one, they should always check the other app as well. The main difference between Libby and Hoopla, Hoopla, for the most part, is the m books are always available, so you don't have a wait. If you see the book in Hoopla, you can usually download it right now. Libby works more like a physical traditional library where if the book you're looking for is checked out, if you have it, I can't have it, for example, although we still may have multiple copies of it. So it's good to check them both. Other than that, they pretty much work the same. You know, you can read okay. the books on different devices or listen to them. Um, a lot of folks find it really easy to listen in the car. Um, so they both offer those, those options. And Hoopla actually has uh, films in it as well, movies and TV shows. So a lot of folks enjoy that too. Oh, that you don't have to go into the library? Yeah. For? I mean, it, ah. it might sound counterintuitive. Of course, we want people to come into the library. But with the way technology is changing, we're always looking for ways to make using library resources more convenient. And there are a lot of things you can use from home without ever stepping foot in the library. You can even get a library card now online without coming in. Um, so if you don't already have a library card, you can go to our website and you can apply for an e-card and get immediate access to e-books and audiobooks. Wow. I think it's really wow. cool. So when you mentioned library card, 
I am really proud that my Beverly Public <laughs> Library card is so old. Yeah. The phone number on it has the area code 508. Oh, which that's is funny. like two yeah, that, that's area an old codes one. ago. Yeah, do you have the apple or is it like a drawing of the library? Do you know what I, color it is? Yeah, I, red, I, green. I, I don't remember. I okay. don't remember. Our but current ones a, are black, but they're all it, good. It's really um, old, and I love it yeah, that it's so old. Yeah, I love that, Carol. <laughs> we love seeing the different cards that people have had through the years and that still work. Yeah. But I also always like to emphasize that if you're someone who hasn't used the library in a long time, don't be shy to come back. Even if you're someone who maybe had some fines, we want you to lose to use the library. Um, we're more interested in having people come use the library than mm -hmm. we are in collecting fines or billing people. We want everyone to feel welcome and we're there for you. So I don't want anyone to feel afraid to come back or afraid to try. A lot of people come in and say, I haven't been here in 20 years. Welcome back, you know, right. we're, it's right. not a contest. Yeah. Um, no, it's, I, I, I love the library. Yeah, what, good. what other things might be of particular interest to seniors that we haven't mentioned? Yeah, so I'd love to talk a little bit about the Museum Pass program oh, that we yes, have. Yes. So um, some folks may not know about this, but funded by our, our wonderful friends group, our friends of the library, we have a Museum Pass <coughs> program where you can go on, you can do this online or in person or on the phone and reserve a museum pass to one of these museums and then get in either for free or at a reduced rate. So we have wonderful museums in this program, the Peabody Essex Museum. If you reserve this pass, two people can get in for $12 each, which is a really good discount. Mm -hmm. Um, we have the, the Wenna Museum, Zoo New England, the Aquarium, Museum of Science, the MFA, the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, and several others. Yeah, no, that, that's fabulous. That, yeah. I, I use that program a lot. I good, like, I like good. That a lot. We love to hear that. What, and what else? What else? What is else? There? Uh, we have so many things. So. Uh, Here's a good one that has that blend of physical, traditional, and online, is magazines and newspapers. So Talk about that, yes. We do still subscribe <clears throat> to a lot of print newspapers and print magazines, mm -hmm. and I would encourage people to come in and spend some time reading. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of folks who do that, a lot of seniors, but a lot of people of all ages who come in and browse through the print newspapers. So we get the Boston Globe, the Boston Herald, the New York Times, Salem News, USA Today, and the Wall Street Journal. Every day you can come in and just page mm -hmm. through them. You can also read a lot of those online through the library. So if you didn't know, we provide online access to the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, just like the same version that you may pay for. Um, and then we also have a subscription through a database vendor called NewsBank that allows you to access the Salem News. So whether you want to read today's articles or you're researching something, you know, maybe you you remember something that happened in Beverly five years ago and you, mm -hmm. you want to pull up some articles about it, you can go through this database to do that research. It's really easy to use and it's included in your library membership. Okay, so I am a heavy, I think of myself as a heavy user uh -huh. of our libraries. Uh -huh. and, and I didn't really know that. You didn't know that. So yeah. I get a yeah. couple of we get a couple of newspapers in paper. Uh -huh. We get a couple online. Uh -huh. And I don't have to be paying for those online ones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's <laughs> wonderful to support right. paid and, newspapers, too. Yes, but yes, yes you, the library does provide access to those for you as well. Okay. And, you know, this is something, going back to what you mentioned before with the reference desk, if you need a little more of a tutorial on how to use these things, you can come in and a librarian will be happy to show you how to access those online resources. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm um, going to do that soon. You should definitely yeah, do I that. Want, I definitely yeah. want to do that. Um, and it's very similar with magazines. So we actually, across <coughs> both libraries, which I should remind everyone that we also have a branch in Beverly Farms, um, we subscribe to over a hundred print magazines, and a lot of those might be uh, sort of niche magazines that you would maybe love to see, but your budget doesn't allow you to subscribe to all of those. So a couple I wanted to mention, Piecework, Quilting Arts, 
you know, for folks that are into quilting and sewing. And then we also get things, we get The Economist, The Week, which is a wonderful oh, yes, magazine, but yes. pretty expensive to subscribe to. People, Rolling Stone, National Geographic, Prevention. And so you can read these in print at the library, or you can, we have a lot of them available in Libby as well. So the Libby app that we talked about before, you can also actually subscribe to the magazines right in there. Mm -hmm. And as the new issues come out, they'll become right available for you in your app. Okay. And, you know, when you're saying that, I'm remembering that I know you have a lot of books in large print. We do. That yeah. a, a lot of us... Yes. Me? <laughs> a lot what, of us really appreciate that. I'm glad you mentioned that, too. Right. So in addition to our huge regular print collection, we do have a large print collection, and we're always adding to that. So right. any new fiction book or nonfiction book that's popular generally gets a long, uh, generally gets a large print printing as well. Okay. And so oh, we purchase that. that as well. Okay. And another thing I like to clarify for people, sometimes people come in and they say, I just heard about this book. It's brand new. You probably don't have it yet, or you probably won't have it for a while. We actually pride ourselves on staying on top of new books that are coming out. And um, for the most part, we have those books in the library before they're even available for sale. Oh. We can get them before the street date, and that allows us to process them and you know turn them into a library book with their stickers and covering and whatnot. And so they usually hit the library collection on the day they come out. Now that's not, we don't have every single book of ever course. published, of, of course. course. Um, but you don't need to view the library as, you know, an archive or right. just old books. It's not like that at all. You know, we're more like a bookstore. We have, we have the hot new stuff. We actually also give away these, um, these little magazines called Book Page, and these contain articles and reviews on new books that are coming out. Mm -hmm. They do a really nice job. You can get lots of great reading ideas from it, and these are funded by our friends of the library group as well. So those are takeaways. Folks can just come in and take one home and get lots of great reading ideas. So the friends of the library, I have been a friend of the library for, for many, many years. Well, thank you for your support. It's yeah. not that expensive. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I just want to tell you, it makes me feel so good. Well, and, when it, I'm, yeah, and I'm, it I'm, makes I'm, us able to do yes. so many things. Yes. So the city budget can't cover everything that we do. Right. One of the big gaps there is the city budget does not cover library programming. So we offer so many programs, everything from book discussions, right. author visits, craft programs, uh, story times. We have special uh, performers come and do things like magic tricks for kids, or uh, we have a couple animal events happening this summer. Where, music things. Yeah, we have music, music all kinds of things. And, and that isn't covered by the city's budget. That's right. funded by our friends group. And the friends make their money through memberships, generous right. members like yourself, mm -hmm. as well as the book sales that they run a few times a year. And that's actually, you talk know, about, talk, about, yeah. talk about those book sales. I do want to talk about that from. because we get a lot of calls. I firmly believe Beverly is a city of readers. Um, we really have a lot of people so. reading in this city. And when they're done with their books, they want to move them along. And people love to donate books to the library. And we love that, too, because then we sell our friends group sells those books. Excuse me. Um, to raise money for library programs. So we can take two bags or two boxes of books that are in good, like new condition from people at a time. And then our friends group sorts through those, sets up the book sale, and we sell books at a great price, a dollar for a paperback, two dollars for a hardcover. So you can come deal. and load up. Yeah. yeah and then you can read deal. it and return it to the yes. library and they can <laughs> sell it again. Exactly, exactly. Um, Another thing I think we wanted to chat a little bit about is the Library of Things. Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, some folks may not know that you can borrow through us not only books, but things. So what do I mean by things? Everything from iPads to hotspots. We have some really handy uh, home tools and things. We have a stud finder, a soil tester, a laser level. 
And then we have odd items that maybe you're gonna need one time and never again, and you don't wanna purchase it, such as a metal detector. Um, we just had a woman call a few weeks ago and say she had lost her wedding ring. And she was so upset and worried. And she asked if by any chance we had a metal detector. And yes, we do. And she took the metal detector home and lo and behold, she found her wedding ring. So you just never know what you might need. Um, we have some pro projectors, and then we have some fun tools for home projects you might do, a laminator, a label maker, a shredder. We have a few different uh, digitizers, so you can convert your old VHS tapes into digital video. Um, you can oh, wait, scan so your slides. So people, people can do this on their own? Yeah, they can just come I in, borrow this. these. Check out, you check out these tools just like you would check out a library book and take the thing home and have a great time with it and then return it for someone else. Wow, yeah. so something you touched on that made me think of something else, the art exhibits that yeah. you have, yeah, both I'm at glad the you Farms branch that. Yeah. and the, the main branch. Yeah. One, one of my friends, Stephanie Williams, had a fabulous exhibit yes. on, the, bees. on bees. Yes, um, yeah, we actually I've, put that one up on the second floor, you may recall. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, but we do, uh, we do host an artist in the Sawyer Room of the main library and the Conrad Room of the Farms branch each month. Right. And so this coming month in June, we are going to have Dan Knott at the main library, who uh, recently worked with the city to do a graphic novel about solar panels in Beverly. So it's a really neat, a really neat exhibit, and he's going to be coming and visiting the library as well, so people can come see him talk. And then at the Farms Branch, we are going to have the art of Patrick O'Donnell, who you might know. He's a really talented, self-taught artist in Beverly, and he's going to be displaying his paintings there. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. Do, you, do you happen to remember the name of the artist on display in the farms right now? C Cabell, Cabell, uh, something like that? It might like be that. Ca Ca Cambia, Cambria, Cambria Davis. Cambria. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I met her a few weeks ago, yeah. and she told me she was going to be really doing this exhibit. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think it's still up. You could still yes. check it out. Although yes. by the time this airs, it might be taken down. Right. Um, but we always have information about the exhibits on our website. Yeah. So if you just go to beverlypubliclibrary.org, mm -hmm. click on events, and then art exhibits, you can read about the art that we have up and a little background about the artist there mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And... I, this is, I don't know if this falls under the library, but all kinds of fabulous programs take place in the library. Yeah, I'm glad so you the, mentioned that. The, the other night I was yeah. at the Jewish History, yes. an evening of Jewish History. Yes. was yes. fabulous. And I can tell you there were a lot of older Beverly people yeah. there. Yeah. I grew up in Beverly, yeah. so I remember so many of these things that they talked about. Yeah, that's was wonderful. Fabulous. That's, I'm and so you, glad to you, hear that. And you host so many different yeah. programs. Yeah, so we there. have multiple meeting rooms that are available to community groups and city groups. The event you mentioned was run by Wangari Fahari, right. uh, the city's right. DEIB director, and she and I are working pretty closely together on some other events as well. We have a Juneteenth celebration coming up on That's June right. 3rd, and everyone is welcome at that, too. Um, but yeah, we have meeting space. And so if you're a community group, you can reserve one of our rooms and host a meeting. And so we have all kinds of groups that meet there and uh, conduct their business. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's good. It is, yeah. What are we forgetting? What are we forgetting? I mean, I think we <laughs> could talk so many all things. day. Right. Um, did you know that we have notary service? I did not. So we have free notary service. So if you need something ah. notarized, you can make an appointment to come in mm -hmm. and uh, have it notarized by one of our notary librarians. Mm -hmm. We also accommodate walk-ins when we can, but we really encourage folks to make an appointment so that we're sure a notary is present for you. And you can book your appointment on the website or by calling. Good. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's fabulous. No, um, I don't know that we else? talked enough about programs. I mean, okay. you know, I do want to highlight... So we always put out a monthly newsletter, mm -hmm. and this is we still produce one in print, but you can also subscribe online, and that lists all the events that we have going on in a given month. And then in the summer, we also produce this summer reading brochure. 
So this gives you a look at all the programs we have going on for the entire summer. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of great things going on for adults this summer. So we have Cookbook Club, and uh, the theme in June is Thai cuisine. So folks are encouraged to cook a dish uh, using maybe one of the library's cookbooks and bring it in for everyone to share. And people just gather, share the food, and talk about their recipes. It's a really nice program. And something you'd mentioned earlier to me was grandparents bringing yeah. their kids in. Talk about yeah, that a little I'm bit. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. So, of course, a huge part of what we do is serve children and their families. You know, children are just learning to read. Um, there's so many ways the library can help inspire them and help them learn from crafting programs. We have Science Squad, and we have, of course, the really important story times where you come and hear a librarian read a story to you. You do songs and little dances together and things like that. And it's not just for a child and their parent. It can be a child and a nanny. It can be a child and a grandparent. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have little grandkids or a little grandniece or nephew or another family member you're close with who's of that age, we totally encourage grandparents to bring them. Beautiful. Yeah. And something I'm just remembering, kind of a one-time thing, you made it you had oh, Eclipse yeah, Watch and we, glasses available, we did. We gave and out. then you recycled them. We did. I we that. did. We were. That was really cool. So we gave out a thousand Eclipse glasses. And uh, afterwards, it was actually spearheaded by our fabulous teen librarian, Katie Nelson. We did a collection event so people could come in and drop off their glasses. And then Katie worked with a group of teens to sort through them, get rid of any of the ones that were damaged, and then sent the glasses to Astronomers Without Borders, which is going to send those glasses down to South America for an upcoming eclipse that you'll be able to see from that part of the world. Fabulous. So pretty cool. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for thank having you. And me. And let me ask, how long have you been director? I, so I became the director in April 2020. Wow, which, it's already been Which is the time years. everyone wow. will remember. Um, so it was a strange time to start in that role, but I had already been at the library for about 10 years before that. Right, so, um, right. And I think we did a great job coming through that, and we're all yes. happy to leave that time in the past. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for meeting with me. This is Thriving Together, an episode done through BevCam for the Senior Center. Thank you for joining us.